guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. This is my second video. If you like my video or if it could help you a little, please do like my video. Now directly go through the topic. Let us go through the topic. Whoa. Well, the topic that I'm going to discuss about today falls under BJT, that is Bipolar Junction Transistor. I assume that you already know it. And NPN and PNP are two types of BJT. I've already mentioned that in my previous video. So, why do we need transistor configuration? Let me tell you, it is because BJT has three terminals, that is emitter, base, and collector. But we need four terminals in a transistor to be connected in a circuit. That means we already have three, emitter, base, and collector, but one more is required, and that is made by making either common base or common emitter or common collector with either of the terminals. So, this is today's topic. We are going to talk about common base configuration among the three common configurations. We're going to pick up common base configuration and its characteristics. Under the characteristics, we're going to study about input characteristics and output characteristics. So, in case of common base configuration, uh, in the circuit arrangement, input is applied between emitter and base, and output is taken from collector and base. Here, base of the transistor is common to both input and output and hence the name common base mode. So everything has been described here. Input is applied between emitter and base since base is common and output is taken from collector and base. Your, in both the cases base is common thing and it is therefore known as common base mode. So here are the characteristics of common base configuration, but before going jumping directly into the common base configuration and its characteristics, let us know how we study the characteristics. So the electrical behavior of a transistor can be described by showing the interrelation of the various current and voltages. So uh, it can be input voltage or input current or output voltage or output current, but the behavior can be described by showing the interrelationship between them. And these relationships are actually plotted in graph. There they are actually plotted and graphical representation is shown in there. And the curves that we obtain, that is what is actually studied in order to study the characteristics, in order to figure out what characteristics do they show. So that is it. So here we have the circuit diagram which helps us to study the input and output characteristics curve for common base configuration. I'll come back to this diagram later on, but now, for now, let's move forward. Here are the input characteristics. So it is a curve between emitter current and emitter base voltage VBE at constant collector base voltage. Now let us remember that the thing, the parameter that is kept constant is VCB, that is collector base voltage, which is from the output side. So let me make, make you clear about the input side and the output side. Let's get back to the circuit diagram. So you, here, here you can see. Here is a resistor E, that means um, emitter resistor, and here is emitter, here is base. So this separates the two loop, this line separates the two loop, and the left side to this line, this loop can be considered as input loop, and this loop can be considered as output loop. And what are involved in input loop? They are emitter and base. So here IE current flows in the emitter side and VBE VB voltage is, up there, is applied in the input side. So that means it is the curve between emitter current IE 
and emitter base voltage VBE. So that is why the graph is plotted in between IE, that is emitter current, and VBE, the emitter base voltage. And collector base voltage VCB is kept constant. The emitter current increases rapidly with a small increase in emitter base voltage. That means the input resistance is very small. So, uh, in case of graph, I'll take you to the graph for now. Here is the graph. And as mentioned earlier, the graph is plotted. The graph has been plotted in between IE, emitter current, and VBE, that is base emitter voltage. And it has been said that with a small increase in VBE, input voltage, IE increases rapidly. So you can see there is not much progress in x-axis, but in case of y-axis, you can see that the, the, the graph grows, you know, changes rapidly and it grows increasing upward. So you can see it on your own on the graph. So here input resistance is given by R equals to VBE by IE that is base emitter voltage by emitter current. The emitter is almost independent of collector base voltage as has been mentioned a lot. Uh, the emitter current is almost independent of collector base voltage because collector base voltage here is kept constant. So you can see uh, that uh, here in the formula formula that input resistance is equal to VBE by IE that means input resistance is directly proportional to the base emitter voltage and is inversely proportional to emitter current so here what you can say is in case of input resistance input resistance is directly proportional to VBE so the emitter current increases rapidly with a small increase in emitter base voltage. Alright. So, even if very less amount of VBE is, VBE is supplied, IE tends to increase rapidly. That means, uh, for in the circuit connection, very less amount of VBE is supplied. Right? So very less amount of VBE, that means R is directly proportional to VBE and very less amount of VBE is, sub VBE is supplied. So that means input resistance itself has to be small, right? So this is where this point leads us to. It means that the input resistance is very small. So this is the graph. You can pause the video, you can copy it if you need it. So let's move now into the output characteristics of common wave configuration. So as we mentioned before, it is the curve between collector current IC and collector base voltage VCB at constant emitter current. Earlier, in case of input characteristics, the thing or the parameter which was constant was VCB. It was voltage. But now in this case, it is current. The emitter current is made constant here. That is the curve between collector current IC and collector base voltage VCB at constant emitter current. The collector current varies with collector base voltage at very low voltages that is less than 1 volt. The transistor is never operated in this reason. This reason is called saturation reason. So yeah, what is written is the collector current varies with collector base voltage at very low voltages that is less than 1 volt. So let me show you the graph here and what, is this been, what has been mentioned over here is the IC, collector current varies with VCV, collector base voltage, where in, the, in case of very low VCV. So that means let us assume that this line here is 1 volt and there is something which is, there are numbers which are less than 1 volt to the left of 1 volt and to the right. Their number, the numbers are increasing, right? So, in case of numbers or data which are less than one volt, you can see there is uh, their IC varies to a little extent. So that point meant this. So after one volt, when the data increases more than when the data you obtain is more than one volt, you can see that there's a straight line being shown. Here you can see 
there are straight horizontal lines in the curve so how much uh, how uh, how much you increase or decrease the value of VCB that doesn't really matter because it gives you the same curve because IC does not vary at all so that is what it that is what that point meant we go back in there and when the value of VCB is raised above 1 volt the collector current becomes constant which is indicated by straight horizontal li lines or curves I've already shown you a very large change in VCB only can change in collector current so if the VCB is made very large then only you can uh, feel you can see the change in IC so you can notice it through the graph itself the output resistance is the ratio of change in collector base voltage to collector current at constant emitter current. You know it already, right? So, a very large change in VCB only can change in collector current. I have to, you know, kind of make it clear to you guys. Wait for a while. And we're here. So, I have got this formula. R out. That means output resistance is equal to change in VCB divided by change in IC that is collector current and constant emitter current all right so even in this case R out is directly proportional to the change in VCB that means very large amount of VCB is required in order to make a change in IC as we've already learned so that means VCB should be very high and therefore R out is very high as well because it is directly proportional to change in VCB so does that make sense to you so here yeah, I've mentioned that output resistance is directly proportional to the change in collector wave voltage. So VCB should be very large in order to change IC. And therefore R out should be very large as well. That is it. So thank you so much guys for watching my video. I just feel as if this video will come into use for you watching and giving time to this video is going to be fruitful for you if it is so then please do like the video share the video subscribe and hit the bell icon now this is specially for you guys thank you so much guys for watching the video goodbye see you in the next video